The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. What I want to share today is I feel we're in such a, Jason's been getting the same download that I've been getting, that other people have been getting. We're hearing the same thing. He is becoming our all in all and he's going to come to his church and when he comes into the church, you get out of the way. He wants to be the Lord and, and I'll tell you what, he is the word and no matter how much word you've got in your mind, no matter how much word, it's basically going to be what word is not in your heart is basically in any, any areas that's contrary to the Word of God is going to begin to stand out like a sore thumb because he's coming in as Lord. He's coming in as your all in all. And I really, really pray that even in the next week you practice uh, some of the how to's that we're going to give for that, something that the, the Lord kind of has uh, unfolded to us in a, in a practical way. Can we put that, uh, that uh, outline up? I want you to look at this outline. This was something that from the time I was a baby Christian, this is the way I approached the Word to make it flesh. I was never satisfied with knowing the Word. I was only content when I felt like I owned that Word. Can we make that bigger? Can you all see that? All right. It's basically how the in-working of the Word is what I call owning it, absorbing it, I used to call it cherishing it, and that didn't translate when Jennifer was having me go granular and teach her how, I said, when I'm go reading through the scriptures, if something has life on it, that is God speaking. I don't continue to read. If it's got life on it, that's a message for me, right? And if it's got life on it, the first thing I want to do is I stay there until I meet the author of that word and the reality of the living word, not ink on a page, but the living word. It's living, it's alive. And I would absorb it and I would see that that word was usually always, as a matter of fact, contrary to my flesh. And so there was a birthing taking on. You cannot cease to have flesh, but you can bring that flesh in submission through the work of the cross under the authority of that word. So it would absorb. And I would see that what God was doing while I'm, while I'm hungering after that word that had life on it. How many know what I'm talking about? When you're reading your Bible and something stands out. It's that simple. When it stands out, you ought to stop dead in your tracks and take that as if that were the only word for that moment. You don't need other words. At that moment, that is God Himself revealing Himself to you. Honor it. Cherish it. That was my original word. Absorb it. And while you're absorbing it, I noticed there was a supernatural transaction taking place, birthing. He was birthing something, just like a born-again experience. He, birthed, he was birthing in me a new attitude where flesh may have ruled in that area, but now His Word is starting to rule in that area. And I was a partaker of the divine nature. In other words, His character was staying on the inside, not up here, but a residue of His specific nature that was described by His Word. His Word and His nature always match. If you want to know what you're absorbing, look at the Word that you're absorbing. Whatever that Word says is basically that part of Him that you're absorbing, and you're becoming part of the divine nature. And then verse 5, or point five, this is Jennifer's granular chart for what I did without words. This is just me and Jesus, <laughs> all right? And Jennifer said, we're going to go granular so we can teach other people what you're doing because you're not talking. I do this all without talking. I know most of you pray, you talk a lot. I don't. I listen a lot. He told me you don't have nothing to say until you've heard something. So I wait till I hear something. That's the way he trained me out of Isaiah 50. I'm going to give you the tongue of a disciple 
and I'm going to give you a tongue of a disciple, but I'm going to give you an ear to hear and to speak a word in season to them that are weary, and I'm going to wake you morning by morning. I'm going to give you a word. So that told me I was supposed to sit still and shut up because I was a talker. I wanted to tell God everything. I wanted to preach to God, but he didn't want to hear my sermon. As soon as I shut up, he would tell me something far superior. It's like, kind of learned after a while that he was trying to get me to sit still. He said, you, after I give it to you, then you can talk all you want about it, but why don't you wait until I've said something instead of trying to make me say something. All right, the value system then, this is key, because this is what the message is today, and this is what God's going to bring to his church. Your value system now is not doctrine. It won't contradict good doctrine, but it's Jesus. It's the living word. We've got to get the church back to the place of the living word instead of doctrine. And we're going to cover that. And I want to show you and give you some tips on how you can check yourself out. And the most mature person in this place, including Jennifer and I and all the rest of us, are going to fall short compared to what God has for us. And we're going to show it today, but how we can, how we can pursue Him. All right. So the inworking of the Spirit, once that word becomes flesh, that's your value system. What's your value system now? Ink on a page? No, Jesus, Him, Him, the person. Now, after that is your value system, then He's trying to not just stay confined and restricted in you. He's trying to express himself through you. So there's an outworking of it. If your value system is God himself, you're all in all. This is where we're going with this. You're all in all. He's my all in all. That's my value system. The only way that I know to stay connected to him is to walk into that relationship to where you either pray in the spirit, which builds you up in the most holy faith and keeps you in the love of God, or you walk a forgiveness lifestyle that gets so proficient that you begin to deal with temptation and release it before it becomes sin. That should be the goal of a forgiveness lifestyle, not to be a good forgiver, but to be so proficient at forgiving that you get allergic to anything that's not Him and you learn to release it while it's still a temptation and you practice and you stay connected. And what does that do? It bursts an attitude. The attitude that's in there is gratitude. It's a thank you. Just like when you got saved, nobody taught you to say thank you, right? I asked Jesus to come into my heart, cleanse me of my sin. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. That's an automatic, spontaneous response to a supernatural experience. You don't say thank you unless you really believed you received something, right? So in that attitude change, you now have a positive attitude. Now, I, I was trained in all four Bible camps and in the, my faith camp training taught me that speak positive, don't speak negative. But God took me in the school of the Spirit and He said, you better take it farther than that. It's not just about speaking positive and speaking negative. The only true positive is the cross. And until you've applied the cross, that po you can speak a positive word from fear. There's no cross. So it's not just if you speak a positive word, it's the source of the positive word. Is it the attitude that was in Christ Jesus? Was it a, a selfless attitude that I'm in union with God and my, I only do what I see my Father doing, I only say what I hear my Father saying, but I, it is a we. Say that with me, we. we. Because here's, here's the indication, and then your motivation is going to be love and your behavior is going to be redemptive. You're going to have a redemptive mindset. Your entire Christian life is looking, how can I be redemptive? How can the two of us, Jesus and me, me and him, him and me, me and him, him and me, me and him, us, that's got to change because here was the indication that school in, when God took us to school, he sent us uh, traveling into various ministries. You can leave this up for a little while. Some people want to take notes on that. Uh, and can the camera go on it so that anybody watching by Ustream, they, they str I got emails on that, they struggled with trying to see that. Give them plenty of time to look at that. Um, 
But here's the, here's the thing that God is basically saying. <clears throat> uh, that there is a liberation that's coming to us if to whosoever will. And I'm a whosoever will, and most of you here are a whosoever will. And this liberation is a secret, and that is Christ is going to become all in all. And we look at everything from uh, one of the missing links we said is discernment. The thing that's different about discernment compared to what we're accustomed to doing is we're accustomed to looking at results and calling it fruit. You ever seen an unsaved businessman become successful? Okay, that's not fruit if he's not saved. So you can be successful and unsaved from the world's point of view. So you can see results. I want to know what true discernment does is what is the source? Is it God or is it flesh? Is it God or is it flesh? So discernment always goes to the source, the source, the source, not the fruit, the fruit, the fruit. Because many will be deceived if they just judge by the fruit. I've seen things that you would call fruit come from witches. Right? So you've got to know the source. I've seen people do stuff that looked fruitful. But all real Bible fruit, fruit of the Spirit, all fruit comes only from intimacy. Apart from intimacy, there is no legitimate fruit. So we're going to deal with dead works today, and I think you're going to be a little bit shocked. So don't be too shocked. Just simply say, God, I want to abandon myself to the all in all. I need you. I need you desperately to be Lord of my life. Now, I want to start here. In Ephesians 1.10, it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he is going to gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Christ is all and in all. Colossians 3.11. Colossians 3.11, I'm going to drink that in until that is so written on the tablet of my heart that from this day forward, I'm prophesying to myself here, from this day forward, I am only going to think in terms of we. What do I mean by that? We. Christ in me. The hope of glory. All right? And I want, to, I want to kind of just lay a little bit of a foundation scripturally. And that is in John chapter 14, verses 3 to 7. And if I go and prepare a place for you with my Father, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. I can just imagine him... Those disciples, they remind me so much of me. They go, really? <laughs> Where I go, you know, the way you know. Thomas said, naturally it was Thomas. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am. I am the way. Now listen close. This is just the foundation and then I'm going to give you the how-tos to make your week wonderful and challenging at the same time. The way. We do not learn a method. Everything we've taught came out of my intimacy with God and Jennifer forced me to make it granular. It is not a method. It is a person. It's insulting to call it a method when it's a relationship. It's Jesus. Can we make well, one, two, three, four? Sure, we did it. Jennifer made me do it because she wanted me to teach her what I was doing when I wasn't talking with my eyes closed. And I loved her just enough to put it in words. And we love you just enough to put it in words too. All right? So, we don't learn a method. Jesus himself is the way. How many have ever heard that story? I heard it when I was a young Christian. The story about the guy who wants to go through the jungle and he's asking for a map. And the guide says, no, there's no map. I am the way. He goes, no, I, I want to know how to get through the jungle. He goes, I am the way. I mean, 
I'm the only one. There is no map. It's me. Well, that's what God's trying to say. I am the way. There's no way. So much for all the ways of God, ways to God, right? He said, I am the way. It's interesting how easily deceived people are. They think there's so many ways to God. Jesus said, I am the way. He should have said, I am the only way, but I think he implied that quite clearly. All right? There's a difference between an encounter and a method. Do you agree? Do you want an encounter or do you want a method? I want an encounter. Here's the problem that we saw. When we traveled, we would do a simple, it was actually God schooling Jennifer and I on how to equip the church better with the how-to's. The first how-to we saw was we would stand in front of even large congregations and say, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Quick, point to Jesus. 99% did this. Well, I'm going to get back to this. Do you realize how bad that really is? Not just because they didn't listen to the scripture, but that's bad, and yet almost everybody did it. So we're going to have to correct that. That's a serious, serious error. And then we would teach them, okay, real quick, point to your will. 99% in well-taught churches pointed here. That's going to have to be corrected. This is the door of the heart. This is where Jesus came in. He didn't come in your head. He didn't stand at the door and knock. Some of me might have had to do a little bit <laughs> on your head. But that's ultimately he came into your spirit. He opened, this is the epicenter. Your spirit fills your head to toe, but the door of the heart is the will, and the door of the heart is what you open to. It's what you, you either permit or forbid. There's binding and loosing for you, permitting and forbidding from the heart. Now, it says, Jesus in us is like a spiritual stairway to the Father, that where I am, you will be also. So there is a clear connection here. He raised us up together to sit in heavenly places. I am the way, so there's no man comes to the Father but through Him, correct? He's the way. The truth. Truth is the reality, the spirit of truth. The things of this world are deception or the spirit of the world. Spirit of error. It's either the spirit of truth or the spirit of error. So it's, it's making it simple. When I was a baby Christian, the way the Lord showed me of Christ within and not Christ in heaven, yes, He's there, but I was just a baby Christian and God showed me that from now on, Dennis, the rest of your Christian walk and why we so emphasize Christ within as far as except, uh, it's like He, how many ever saw 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the real old fashioned version, Jules Verne? Well, in those days, the deep sea diver had this bulky metal suit with a helmet that they used to bolt on, and they would go down into the water. But there was an air hose going up to the ship where they got pumped fresh air. God says, that is the way it's going to be from this day forward. I'm going to put you in an environment called planet Earth, like under the water, but your connection from heaven is going to be in here. You're going to breathe the breath of life. It's like that hose came from heaven and is connected in here. That was the first illustration he gave me. And from that time on, I did not call God to come down. I relied upon God within. The kingdom of God is within me. On earth as it is in heaven. How many times do we have to hear that before we practice it? Now you say, I do that, I do that. Well, you wait. We'll see how well we do this. Because none of us do this very well. All right? The last one. Uh, if that deep sea diver was my connection, it's not words spoken about Christ, but Christ himself. I'm going to go slow with that because this is what everybody does. It's not words spoken about Christ, but Christ himself, the person. That's why I was upset when they came out with that, not the, all this uh, controversial stuff, but what would Jesus do? 
I'm saying anybody that's asking what, what Jesus is doing is going to try to fulfill something in the flesh. Instead of going to Jesus. Don't ask what would Jesus do. You go to him and ask him. I don't get it. That separation has to be broken because that's dead letter and it'll end up dead works. It's not what should I do. Picture this. This is what I've seen even in the pastorate in the early years particularly. Um, people saying, that's so, so they hurt me. They hurt me bad and, and I, I know the Bible says I'm supposed to forgive them. Right? And so they write a letter that I'm sorry, but they're angry while they're writing the letter, I'm sorry. That's dead letter. It doesn't work. If you're angry writing somebody that you forgive them, but you think that the writing of the letter is somehow healing you, dead works. That'd be like, it's, it, there's such a lack of relationship, but yet biblically literate. A lack of relationship, say that back to me. A lack of relationship, yet biblically literate. It would be like asking, uh, should I cry at a funeral or not? Well, let's go, let's go get counseling. Let's go, what does the word say? Oh, the word, the word says, I don't know, it doesn't really say whether I should cry at a funeral or not. That's not a relationship, is it? That's doctrine. Doctrine isn't going to save you people. It's going to be Jesus. And it should be spontaneous. You're too much in our heads and wondering why God is not manifesting as powerfully as he could through the church. But it's, this is still the problem. There's a separation. There's a, an unplanned deception of distance. He never left you. Now, I am the way, I am the truth. To do something out of mere doctrine or because it was a good idea. Oh, and we're living in the South now. You know what? It's kind of prevalent more down here. I, or at least I saw it more down here. You know what it is? Well, why did you do that? It was the Christian thing to do. Did God tell you to do that? Or was it just the Christian thing to do? Isn't that something? It's like, if I did everything that was the Christian thing to do, I couldn't be here today because I'd be feeding every person that I saw that looked hungry. I'd be giving money to every single person because I wouldn't know who needed it and who didn't need it, so I'd just give it to everybody. It's the Christian thing to do. You're not even doing the Christian thing you do. Most of the time, those are guilt offerings. Hmm? There are people that will give to Habitat for Humanity not because they care for those people, but to ease their conscience because they might have some money. The Christian thing to do. I'll tell you what, we're going to have to get an awful lot closer to Jesus to only do what I see my father doing, to only say what I hear my father saying. That's going to come spontaneously out of a relationship, not out of your intellect of thinking, what is the Christian thing to do? What would Jesus do? All right? You do something out of a good idea, it's dead works. You do something out of mere doctrine, it's dead works. I don't care how good it looks. Remember, it could look like good fruit, but it could just be dead works. The life. Christ doesn't have life. He is the life. Anything apart from Him is death. Do you believe that? Anything, He is life. He doesn't have life. He is life. Therefore, life comes from forth spontaneously out of a relationship. If I say I forgive you, but I'm still troubled in my heart, I'm speaking forth death. If we say I forgive you with supernatural peace, there is life coming forth from us that is blessing someone that they can partake of that divine nature and receive it. Now, here's the problem. We used to magnify the problem 
or fail to magnify the problem. We used to give the solution. One time we went to a church and we were given the solution how to get set free from sexual immorality until we found out that half of them needed to know it was wrong first. So sometimes we go too fast with the solution, so I'm going to give you the problem. Here's the problem. In Adam, we inherited a problem called sin. And I want to make this simple, but you know the scriptures. The whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. So that's a spirit, right? The whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. There's no independent self. You are under the sway of the wicked one or you are under the control of the Lord. There's a law of the spirit of life and there's a law of sin and death. There's a law of life, there's a law of death. Which one's operating? Now, it says, You, Christ made alive, you once were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. You could be thinking that you're doing just what you want to do, but you're under the influence of the prince of the power of the air, not even know it. All my drug buddies in my day all thought that they were just doing what they wanted to do. They were free. And I'm going, well, if you're so free, quit. I can quit anytime I want to. Anybody in here ever say, don't raise your hand. Anybody in here ever say that? <laughs> all, me and all my buddies, we, we can control it. We thought we could play with fire because we could control it. That's arrogance. And that's the way of the world. And the prince of the power of the air has already indoctrinated you and seduced you into deception. Thinking yourself wise, you proved you're a fool. Now, here's, here's the point I want to get to. We were created by God to be, I'm going to keep this super simple for today because I want to give you homework. And if I make it too complicated, you won't do your homework, you'll forget what it was. Here's three phrases that I want you to memorize or write it down. Three short phrases. Sin is a spirit. And this one's going to get us all. Sin is separation. And thirdly, sin is an independent self. If you do like Jennifer and I did when we were young Christians, we studied all of the ancients, the people that walked the closest with God. We, we wanted to emulate what real Christianity looked like, not just to be seen and heard, but those ones. And the one common denominator is that at some point they found that the cry of their heart was for union with God, deeper union. This is what we're asking for this morning, deeper union. But the central secret of all history was that God wanted to make that secret known by revealing His Son Jesus to us that they that are joined to the Lord are one spirit with Him. Now, I'm skipping a lot of these notes, Jennifer. There's too much in here. I want these three points to be clear. Sin is separation. Say that back to me. Sin is separation. As far as I'm concerned, when you say, Christ in you, the hope of glory to spirit-filled believers, and you say, where's Jesus? And they go like that. That's separation. Uh-oh. There is a serious need to return to the Christ within and have Him become your all in all. He is not your all in all. Listen to this. I'm going to give you a list. If you or I, and we've all done it, say, well, God made it happen. Why did God allow it? God is punishing me. I've got to manipulate people. I have to control circumstances. Where is God in this? I feel alone. I feel helpless. I'm afraid. Every time you say that, you are in separation because it should be a total lifestyle of us. This is all about me. I'm afraid. When you say I'm afraid, you have just acknowledged separation. How much do you talk separated? I have a problem. 
I'll tell you one of the first things he taught me, just got off drugs, got filled with the spirit, and all I knew is that like the deep sea diver, Jesus he was here and we were going to do it. And I remember I had been on welfare, I'd let everything go to pot, I had basic, pot, literally pot, <laughs> and, and, and all of a sudden I got cleaned up my act and had no money, and I wanted to pay back welfare, and I wanted to do, which couldn't do anyway, but all of a sudden I knew that I was going to be responsible for what me and God were going to do, and my transmission went out in the car. I had $12.50 in my checkbook, and I said, listen to this, because this needs to be practiced by everybody. The spontaneous response was, how are we going to do this one, God? You don't say we anywhere near enough. I don't care how mature you think you are. You say I. And you are implying there's distance. But when I said, oh, how are we going to work this out? Oh, well, the thought came to me to go to Marenchin's transmission guy. I went there, and he fixed it and said, I'm just ex I'm changing the fluid. It'll cost you $12. And I had 50 cents left in the checkbook when I was done. That's how are we going to respond. The we response has to be restored back to the individual believer because the poor me and the self-pity is at its optimum among spirit-filled believers. You don't think in terms of we. You think in terms of separation. How about this guy that cut you off in front of the road? Lord, how do I respond? How are we going to respond? No, no, that happened to me. Well, you just separated yourself from God. You're back in, you're back under the, more under the influence of the world than God. Do you see how seldom we say we? We need that. We need that and we need that. <laughs> we need it. But do you realize, I mean, it's like, it's a liberating secret. Union is not self-improvement, but self-replacement. And that's really what God's been speaking to everybody. He wants to replace himself with us. Him, uh, no, I, say, I said that backward. No, he doesn't need, he wants us to replace him so that he rules, he reigns. It's a replaced life. And it becomes an us. Was G did Jesus give us that example? Did he, I only do what I see my father? This is my father that does the works, not I. Paul, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. This life I live. You know all of the scriptures, but I'm not talking about you knowing the scriptures. I'm talking about in everyday experience of walking with God, it's not a we. It needs to be a we. It needs to be an us. It needs to be, how do you want me to respond? I spent in the early years knowing that the one thing God was working on me was to quit asking why and start asking how, how do we respond? How do we respond to this guy? There's nothing that happens that's not coming to him too. Ninety-nine percent of the time we say, why did God allow that? We're coming from a separated viewpoint. Instead of saying, what you're saying is, he's up there and poor me's down here. Isn't that what you're saying? He's up there and we're down here. That's separation. It's a mindset. And it's, and it's the spirit of the world. And it's sinful. What is sin by definition? Separation from God. And we're practicing separation. I think we're going to need more Jesus, don't you? To where the us becomes so prevalent in our heart that there's no more me, myself, and I. It's what's happened to us, Jesus. You'll start responding different. Could you imagine saying, Jesus, we're going to go look at an X-rated movie, Jesus. <laughs> yes, we are. No, you won't. You won't talk like that. When you do that, you do that out of a separated life. 
Hmm? God's looking for a union. And when they, old timers, when they grasp that union, all of a sudden there was a liberation. How huh? I many have read historically, those men and women of God? There was a liberation. Until there is a radical liberation, it's still a, too much of a separated life. We're still too, yes, the kingdom of God is within me. Yes, theoretically I believe Christ is in me. But I act like He's up there. That's going to be your homework. Let's practice that and see if there isn't some improvement. There's going to have to be a we attitude cultivated in us. It is Christ in me. I in Him, Him in me. Here. Amen. Not there. Amen. But every time you say, poor me, He's up there and you're down here. Poor me down here, He's up there. It's implied distance and it's deception. Amen. When the whole plan was to get us to walk in the Spirit, to practice His presence, 24-7. But if you look at life from separation, you begin to wonder, was that God? Was that the devil? What is this? I got lots of questions. What is that? When in reality, the first step should have been, how do you want me to respond? How do you want me to respond? Because we are in this together. It didn't just happen to me. How do I, how do I respond? Because it's both of us have to face this. There's nothing come upon my life that hasn't come upon me and him. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? That would, your approach to everything that goes wrong would be totally different because you'd say, oh, are we going to work this? It reminded me of the old Oliver and Hardy movies from way back. The young people don't know what I'm talking about. But Oliver and Hardy was a comedy team, and one was always getting the other one in trouble, and the, they would always have the same line. Well, this is a fine mess you got me into this time. How do I, you know, how do I get out of this fine mess you got me into this time? But if you start talking like that actually with God, you would probably get godly solutions. Wow, this is a mess. How are we getting out of this one, God? You would get better revelation saying we un us than you would with poor me. Poor me says, God's somewhere else. I'm here. Instead of seeing what happened to us, is that actually He meant it to happen. And He's going to work all things together for the good. My God supplies all of my needs according to His riches and glory. His riches and glory are in here. They're not far away. Jesus said, we speak what we know. And Jesus said, we testify what we have seen. Who's the we there? Him and the Father. He talked we all the time. How come we don't talk we all the time? Can you see the difference? Read your scriptures now from the context of Jesus, who was basically... It is not I that do the works, but the Father that does the works through me. I only do what I see my Father doing. I only say he had a we mentality. We do not have a we mentality by any means as much as we are going to need in the days ahead. I'm telling you, he's going to come to his body as the all in all. And it's not going to be the scripture that's going to be your, your, your foundation. It's going to be the person of the Lord Jesus himself by the power of the spirit. Infusing you with his identity that if I come in, I come in as Lord and you get out of the way. And we will accomplish these things. It is God who is at work to will and to do. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives through me. In Him I live and move and have my being. That's a we. That is not, has nothing to do with me asking for God to come down. We've got to quit asking God to come down. Now I understand there are outpourings where that could be valid. But by the most part, most of you are still too I and not we. <laughs> so don't be calling something down when he's already in you. Let the heavens open up and pour out a blessing. That's wonderful. But also know that out of the bottom of the earth in Genesis, the, the earth broke open and artesian wells flowed out. We need both. But we are desperately in need of the we. We need a revelation of all in all as a we. God and I now have a shared life. A crisis comes. No, it doesn't come to me 
when a crisis or disaster comes, it comes to us. Amen. Not me, us. It's the most beautiful aspect of Christianity is that the greater has made a covenant, a love covenant with the lesser. I am the lesser and he is the greater and he that is joined to that Lord is one spirit with him. What a beautiful deal that is for us. And now whatever comes our way we can handle it because it's a we. Yeah. We can handle it. It comes to him, it comes to us. He didn't just permit it. Once you say, well, God allowed that, you already separated yourself. No, 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 no. He didn't say God allowed that. You're talking as an individual, separated from God. No, it's coming to us. God permitted it to come to us. He has his own purposes. I don't understand all of his purposes, but I'm going to find out how we respond. Amen. So what is my attitude? Come on, Lord, handle it now. <laughs> Carry on, Lord. I'll watch and I'll obey. Just give me some promptings here. Amen. How are we going to get that transmission fixed? Okay, Lord, let's see how you do that. Go to Marenches? All right, I'll go to Marenches. That's an expensive place, transmission places. I only got $12. I want to see how you're going to, well, let's see how the Lord works this out. Let's see how we do this to God. Amen. I got $12.50, and he worked it out. But it was a we mentality that brought the power of God into the situation. Amen. Once you separate yourself, sin is separation from God. Sin is a spirit. And sin is a independent self. Say that with me. Sin is an independent self. Why is it an independent self? Why can't I just be neutral? Because you're under the prince of the power of the air. And when you think you're neutral, you're being influenced by sin as a spirit. And you know what? You could be influenced like that and go do some good deeds. Can unsaved people do good deeds? Yeah. What would Jesus do? You better have a more spontaneous, real, interior relationship with Him. That needs to be the living Word. All that Bible that you know in your head isn't going to do you a bit of good unless you're walking with Him. Amen. And I'll tell you what, there's an awakening that's coming, and as it's already commenced, I believe, and He's going to reveal Himself in His church, you know, in us, His church. And as He reveals Himself, all of that junk that you've tolerated and you think is okay, if it's contrary to Scripture, it's going to be contrary to Him personally. You're going to be dealing with a lot of mess in your life. There's a whole lot of things that you thought, oh, well, it was the Christian thing to do, and God said, I'm not in that. I'll never forget that. God told me from the time I was a baby Christian, Dennis, you're going to plant churches. That's, that's your calling. That's all I knew. I was going to start new works from scratch. And he says, you're going to plant churches. I had 13 people in an office building when I was about a year and a half old in the Lord. And they said, Dennis, you should start a church. Well, that's what Jesus would do because he already told me I was. So that has to be confirmation. This is exactly what you don't want to do. So I started it. We went and got a little building in a hotel, and 13 of us stood in a circle and held hands. 13, just, just like the disciples in one, you know. We held hands, and the minute we held hands to pray, we're starting this new church, God spoke in the nearest thing to an audible voice without being audible. I'm not in this. Uh, you know how humiliating that was? I'm, and it's kind of like God said, tell your friends. <laughs> I'm not in this. By the way, God, I got a word of the Lord right now. <laughs> How many of you would have faked it? Huh? I said, God's not in this. But it was the best lesson I ever had. I told him, it's not in it, and we're not doing this. Is that my calling? Yes, but he did not initiate this. It was a good idea. 
dead works are good ideas. It might even be what Jesus would do. But if he didn't tell you to do it, he's not doing it. <laughs> Father, I pray for a revelation this week that we approach everything as a we. Can you do that? I'm, I'm making it as simple as I can. Think in terms of we, me and Jesus. Jesus and I. We. And you will respond to life better, but you're also going to see that you don't do it well. Because there's a sin of separation in our mindset that has prevailed, and it's going to have to be broken through. Because basically, you know, the Bible's an extreme book. I like the fact that it's extreme. But he's the only one that can do it. So I don't want to get into dead works even trying to do that. I want to fix life. It, if disease comes to me, it comes to him as well as me. Yeah. It's his business then that I'm working in, not mine, it's ours. Is it his business? Remember, our covenant is a greater with a lesser. So he's going to have, I could be the CEO of a company, but he's my CEO. Right? I used to get those bumper stickers that said, God is my co-pilot, and I said, you better get out. <laughs> <laughs> Better switch seats real quick here. He needs to be the pilot, not the co-pilot. I don't know who made those bumper stickers. This is like scary people. That's separation. You're undermining Christian core value. Like, he's just there to advise me doing my own thing. Is that, what, is that your view of God? Oh, dear Lord. The burdens are off us. Take my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know when God taught me that scripture, take my yoke upon you for my burden is light. You know what I saw? I didn't see him taking weights off of me. I saw him as a person putting his arm around me and that was the yoke. We are going to do this together. That's the yoke of the Lord. It's not a concept. It's a person. And until you take that word and personalize it into the place where it's a living reality, you've got dead letter. Good dead letter, but it's dead none the same. Amen. Until it comes alive by the power of the Spirit. Until it becomes a person as your value system, not doctrine. You could apply doctrine all day long and have it be totally dead. The central secret is union and a fixed life. And I just want to pray for that kind of transition. I just believe that that we got to get to the place. How are we gonna How are we gonna fix this, Lord? How are we gonna fix this? Because all of you in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome. One translation says, "I've removed its ability to harm you." We should be taking, not that there's no tribulation, but if you, if you paid attention to that one song, the fire, and it said we. When we walk through the fire, when we, that is proper theology, we. Not when I walk through the fire, God will help me. That's separation. No, no. When we walk through the fire, Everything is in union and communion with him. We're going to have to get that heavenly-minded stuff down here and grow up from... And, and who are the needy people in the church that never seem to grow up and mature? They are separated. They say they have Jesus in them, but they're looking for you to do to them all the time. You minister to me. You minister to me. What they're saying is God is in you, but he ain't in me. Amen. Oh, he's in heaven, but it's separation mentality. And separation is sin. Sin is a spirit. And sin is an independent self. Every time you say, poor me, you are functioning as an independent self. <clears throat> we can handle it, because he comes to us. And when we talk about the cross, 
the cross is not the goal. The cross is simply the transition to the oneness that he wants for us. On the other side is liberty. I want for every congregation to raise up people that are so in union and communion with God that they can basically teach other people how to close the gap from that separation thinking. The next time somebody cuts you off in front of the road, spontaneous, and say, whoa, God, look at that. Huh? Is that your typical response? <laughs> I'm going to run that guy off the road right back. I'm going to pull up alongside of him and give him a look. Huh? That's pretty separated from God. And that, isn't even, that doesn't even go under the, what would Jesus do? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're blowing it big time. All by yourself, an independent self, it's sin. An independent self. It's violation of that beautiful union and communion that God gave us. On earth as it is in heaven is the goal of God. How many are going to try the we thing? Look what happened to us when a guy cuts in front of you on the road. Look what happened to us. This is when you're by yourself. It's just you and Jesus, right? Look what happened to us. Now, I'm not talking about the church. We're talking about us. We have a problem. I don't know where my keys are, Lord. See, no more asking Jennifer as if, as if she's got some kind of because she's a woman, she has an innate tracking device <laughs> embedded within her. No. Where's my keys, Lord? We need to find our keys. We need to find our wallet. Right? I'm not going to ask you anymore. I'm going to ask Jesus from now on. How many are going to do this today? Okay. Try it. It's an interesting concept. We... How about, how about this one? Oh, Lord, we have a headache today. You're looking to him as a source. You're including him in all of life. It's, 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 it's the most beautiful place you could ever be on planet Earth. But as soon as you say, I have a headache, well, if God is anywhere the solution, he's far away in heaven, I'm here. I'm here with a headache, and he's in heaven. That's the common perspective, isn't it? It's going to change. Father, let's stand to our feet and let's pray for this radical transformation. We're going to make him our all in all. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com. Did you know that we have an online school available? Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the Spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness, intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-day challenge, self-deliverance, healing rejection, codependency, intimate prayer, the functions of the human spirit, and many, many more. It's formatted so that you can take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. You will never be the same.